had just like a major ordeal. I put the package down and then everything like fell off the thing. Then it unhooked the camera. Like I just had like this big ordeal. So as I was saying, I really wish she would have put her phone number because she didn't. But Nina sent me this beautiful package and you know, she's, um, Nina, um, and she's from Columbus, Ohio. She's been watching my channel for over a year now. And I, you have a beautiful family. And I love watching you interact with your kids. From watching your channel, I noticed your kitchen um, decor. And when I seen these, I, um, I thought about you. Hoping you and your have a great holiday and that you will have a great 2019. Happy New Year, Nina. So when I opened the box... Like, it's amazing how people will, like, come here, to, um, Pancake. It's amazing what people notice. Um, and I don't even, I can't even see it in the camera, but, oh, my God. It is so funny. Like, I think you guys be, like, reading my mind for real. Because when I seen this, I was like, oh, my God. Because I was looking for something like this, similar to this. Um, but I just couldn't find um, the right one. Like, I just was looking at local stores, local stores like Walmart, because my son works there, you know, and stuff like that. And then I didn't really like the one at Walmart because of this, I didn't really like this, that one. And then when I seen, she sent me this, I was like, oh, my God. This was so freaking nice. Look, guys. Oh, my God. These are so cute. I have this one here, and he has a spoon. I'm sorry if you guys hear, like, the rambling noise. I can't wait to be done for the evening so I can go put this in my kitchen and put these up in my kitchen, like, decor. And this one, look, you guys. Oh, my God. Aren't these so cute? Where are you going? Get back here. Oh, you got your toy? These are so cute. Nina, if you are watching this, please email me because I would love to thank you. Like these are so freaking cute. I know exactly where I'm about to put these at in my kitchen. Like for real, I have been wanting something like this for the longest and I have one that's small, but I need it. I probably always needed more than one thing. So this is <sighs> look, and he's like kissing. <sighs> so thank you so much. Like I am so like happy, like for real, these are so super cute. Like, this, I think, is like the final touch to my kitchen because I've been wanting one. So I like these a lot better than the ones that I've seen like at the store because, you know, these are just like a duo. They are a duo. So thank you so much, Nina. You really didn't have to do that. But I appreciate you sending this to me for real and just like looking at my kitchen and seeing what I like. So this, you know what's so crazy? I had this type of decor at my old kitchen in New York. It was the French chef. And I just really like the French chef so much. I don't know why. It's just like I like it. I think it's because it's color red. And so I gave all that stuff away. So I really haven't been able to find, like, certain things that I like. But these, I really do like. These ones look more fancier than the ones that I used to have. He was like the fat French chef. So this one is perfect. And so I thank you so much because you thought about me. And so see what I'm saying, you guys? We are like a family. And I love you guys. Like, y'all pay attention to detail even when I ain't paying attention to detail. Like, oh, okay. So that made me happy today because, you know, I've had like a really long day. And... <sighs> just like a super duper long day and I've been meaning to take my wig off and I haven't been able to like you know so now I probably look a hot mess this wig has been on for days but I, I didn't even get a chance to take it off because as soon as I finished doing like my um not my I didn't even get to finish doing my packages I probably had like two more left but I did get them out anyway I had to run out the door so I was like running all over town at the hospital at the barbershop at the freaking Walmarts like everywhere looking like a hot ass mess today you know but and then i also did have to go to the eyeglass place because they called me to pick up my new glasses like a bitch got some new glasses now like come on camera focus don't do this to me please let's not do this camera camera don't do this okay just there we go like i got some new glasses okay i haven't had a new pair of glasses in like seven years so you know vision whatever they call themselves had a sale for 50 percent off of everything only to the end of this month, I mean, to February. So I got me some new glasses. If you guys seen, I posted on Instagram. And these are by Guess. This, this shit was like three, damn near $400. Not for these glasses, but for everything. 
because my lens, so I, I have bifocals, okay? Bifocals. No, no, they're not the thick glass lens where you can't see because your eyes are... No, I cannot see nearsighted nor farsighted now. You know when you get old? I can't read, like, small writing. Like, if, um... When I'm trying to read something that's small right I have to like push it all the way back. I can't really read it. So these are bifocals. So on the top, they're regular glasses, like regular so I can see far. And then on the bottoms, I have to like, if I want to read something, I have to like lift my head up a little bit and read it. Or I could have just bought um, two different glasses, but I was not trying to pay them like $500. Like y'all fuck out of here with that. I'll just figure this out it looks kind of weird when you look down at shit but i like the glasses but you know what i'm saying i don't i like them but you know what the problem is my lashes are so long that they're not making it comfortable for me to wear them and i cannot go with no little tiny short lashes you know what I'm saying? So I don't know how. If y'all wear lashes and y'all got gla and y'all wear la glasses, can you please help me out, please? Just help a bitch out. Help a bitch out. Um, yeah. So that was my day. It was super. And then I had ex I just had a really long day today. Okay, overly long. I'm over it. I just want to edit this video and go the fuck and lay down, like for real. So anyway, we about to get on to this real talk. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Thank you so much, Nina, for sending me these gifts. This brightened my day a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I got to go back downstairs and check on my son. You know, I had to bring, you know, I brought him home. He had a seizure. Um, and he had another one last month. He gets them um, maybe like once a month or maybe sometimes every other month. But this one was longer than most. Normally, they'll last like a minute. But today, there was like five minutes. So he was in the chair getting his hair cut and he just started seizing. And my grandson was there getting his hair cut with my daughter. So that's how she ended up calling me. And um, I was there look really, really quick to get him, you know. Oh, and another fucking thing. Let me tell y'all. Let me let me just say this to y'all real quick. And I know some of y'all are going to be like, oh, well, he gets what he deserves. I don't really care what he gets. That's not my business, okay? Yeah, he do good. He do, he do need to go to jail for that shit. And I'm talking about R. Kelly ass, okay? Bitch, I'm talking about R. Kelly ass. Now listen, that's he deserved what he get. You damn right, cause he know he did that shit. He know he did that shit. But here's the thing. So I'm driving in my car, and I'm. Why is my motherfucking R. Kelly album, which I downloaded and purchased seven years ago, Apple? They took all my fucking music. Not all my music. They took all my R. Kelly shit. And I mean, I get that. He done did some fucked up shit. Like, you know, I totally get that shit. Like, wow, R. Kelly, you, you shouldn't have did that shit. Like, and that's how I feel. Oh, but hold up. Now it's back on here. Some For some reason, all my songs were removed from my iPod that had anything to do with R. Kelly. And I couldn't even freaking play any of them but you know something i'm noticing that only certain songs are are downloading <laughs> what's not downloading is sex me <laughs> okay i don't know what they did if they took off all his music i don't even know but i paid for this shit so i, I really do want my music back on here so for some reason i have to re-download it I don't know what happened, but I paid for this shit. So if my shit ain't on the Apple, I'm going to need a credit. I understand that they took his shit off, but I'm going to need a credit because um, a bitch want to play her music. I ain't R. Kelly's friend. I don't, you know what? Let me tell y'all something. Uh, let me ask y'all something. Do y'all, what do y'all find so attractive about R. Kelly? Like, I'm not like one of his biggest fans and not because of what he did. I just never really was one of his biggest fans. Like, some of his music is okay, like, but the way that I've watched some of these videos of these women at his concert, they be, like, really going crazy over R. Kelly. They be saying stuff like, oh, he get my panties wet. Like, how? He's on a stage. He's on a fucking stage singing a song. But she's not even singing to you. He's singing to everybody that's going to buy that shit. And, like, I never real got what the big fascination was over R. Kelly. Like, some of his songs are, are, are kind of whack to me. And maybe I should, I don't know. But i am just never been a humongous fan of his. And so I'm trying to figure out what is the big deal with R. Kelly. Like, 
it's it's just his music is his his music to me was never like oh my god I gotta get his album I got one album on here the collection and that's it like I'm not about to go out and buy every R Kelly shit I don't even like him like that like you know I like um Space Jam shit I believe I can fly and I like bump and grind um I don't even like your body's calling or none of that bullshit like I don't like all of that R Kelly shit that he's got going on but I'm really trying to figure out what is the fascination that these women have with R. Kelly that, you know what I'm saying, they can go buck wild crazy at his his concerts. And on top of that, what is the fascination with him where women have already seen this dude, like, interacting with young girls in ways that are just, like, unacceptable to do to young women. And, but yet yeah, still, you still go to his house and just stay, I just, I'm trying to figure this out, like, you seen an eyewitness the tape and you've heard all the allegations from a long time ago I'm talking about. But yeah, it's still y'all still fall into this R. Kelly trap. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to figure out that nigga is like fifty, right? Why do y'all find he old and fat right now? He not even attractive. He wasn't attractive back then to me. I never found the attraction with R. Kelly. I never thought R. Kelly was attractive, okay? I just never thought about him as attractive or anything like, you know what I'm saying? I never was an R. Kelly fan, okay? Now, you give me some Michael Jackson and Prince, bitch, I'm all over it, okay? I love me some Michael and some Prince, okay? But R. Kelly, he's just like the rest of them to me. Um, give me some new edition, okay, bitch? Or listen, mint condition. A bitch love mint condition. Um, Donnell Jones and shit. Like, I rock to their music, but R. Kelly, like, I don't know. Maybe I just cannot relate to him and shit like that. I just cannot relate to R. Kelly like that. And I'm trying to figure out what is the fascination with R. Kelly. Shit, I like Troop, Spread My Wings, Neo. You know, I like their shit a lot better, but you know. To each his own. So I was kind of pissed off when I seen all my shit was gone off of my fucking um, Apple Music. But, you know, it let me re-download it, but not all the songs came back. So um, Apple Music, I'm going to need a refund for these songs. You know, give me the motherfucking credits. So let's get into this because I do want to, you know what I'm saying, go and tend to my son. So basically, if you have a real talk that you would like for me to talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line real talk when you are um, sending me the info. And if you want to change the names of anyone that is in your um, real talk, then you can go right ahead and change the names and let me know. So on that note, you know, because if you don't, 99.9% of the time, bitch, I'm going to change the name for you, baby daddies. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't change the names, then I'm going to do it for you. Okay? So let's get into this real talk. Even though I look like a piece of shit, let's get into it. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 All right, you guys, and I got to go walk the dog, too. All right, hello, April. I hope you are doing well. I love you and all of your Real Talk advice. You are so real and honest, and I always stay, in, I always tune in to Real Talk. This is an update, new needed advice. Last year, I wrote to you by the name of Tish and asked for advice. My husband was talking to a female at work and lied and said he was selling her pills, and I remember that one. Because I think they, she was on the phone or some shit, got caught or some shit like that. I remember this one. I later found out that they were communicating more than I thought. I ended up leaving my husband and getting my own place. Four months later, after getting my own place, I met an amazing guy and everything was good and was going great. We got along so great. However, he recently broke up with me because I can't have any more children. I can do IVF, but he said it's too much for him to deal with for his first child. This broke my heart, but I realized I had to move on. My husband recently has been trying to make amends with me. Should I give him a second chance? We broke up because he didn't value family and drank too much for my liking. Now he says he'll do anything to have me back. Am I crazy or being desperate if I take things slow with the second chance? Should I take him? Should I take time for myself? We have been separated for almost a year. Help, please. Sorry this is too long. 
and I put a picture of me too. First of all, Tish, this is not a long email. I'm done reading. Second of all, you too cute to be freaking stressed out over some man that want to cheat on you. Okay. Let me tell you something. So Tish basically left her husband. You didn't break up with your husband. You just separated. So y'all separated and you moved out into your own place. Four months into you living in your own place, um, Tish, met a new guy they fell in love or whatever yada 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 he broke up with her because she can't have no more children but she can do ibf but he said it's basically too much for him to deal with during his first child for his first child so they broke up she moved on with herself tish moved on however her boyfriend is her her husband excuse me is still trying to make amends with her and he's trying to get back in her life and he's telling her basically that he'll do anything to get her back now let me tell you something she's wondering should she take time for herself is she being desperate because she's going to give him a second chance there's never like a how can i put this first of all let's just get let's get this to the point so you said you you've been separated for almost a year from your husband so that means that you haven't been separated for a year and you met someone else within four months of you living there in your own apartment, Tish. But you and this guy got together and y'all discussed having children together. And he broke up with you because you can't have children and he doesn't want to do IVF. But since y'all broke up, your husband is trying to make amends with you. And you don't know should you take time for yourself or get back with your husband. First of all, let me get to the ex-boyfriend. We're going to call him Robert or we're going to call him Charles, okay? So Charles and Tish broke up because Tish couldn't have no children. And Tish has been separated for her, from her husband for almost one year, not a whole year. Now, let me get back to that because I'm just doing the science and the math. First of all, Tish, you've been separated from your husband. Y'all ain't legally divorced. Y'all ain't even been separated for a whole year. Why the fuck would you even be discussing having a baby with somebody else, even if you couldn't have kids or could have kids? You ain't even been with that new boyfriend for a whole entire year and you discussing having kids with him? I know you haven't been with him for a whole year because you just said you and your husband haven't even been separated for a year almost so that means that you haven't even been messing with that new guy for a whole year because you you left your husband and four months later you met him so let's say you met that new guy y'all was only dating for like let's say six to seven months okay i'm gonna say five to seven months in there because she met him while she was already moved out which was four months so she met him on her fourth month so there's 12 months of the year and they haven't been together, her and her husband, for almost a year. So that's 12 months. So just do the math, you guys. She ain't been separated from her husband in almost a year. She moved out, and four months after her move out, she met someone else. They discussing having a baby. Why the fuck is you messing with somebody and discussing having a baby with him? Y'all ain't even divorced. You still with your husband. Y'all separated or legally separated. Either way, it don't even matter. You just got into this relationship with somebody else. That's on that's not you haven't even been in this relationship with this new dude for over a year. Y'all broken up now. Why are you discussing having children with someone that you just met? You think that y'all think that because they tell y'all I love you, you cute, you this, you that, that they really want they 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 really mean it all the time. Granted, some of them may do just really mean that, but after a few months, it don't even mean that shit. Like I don't I can take you seriously, but I can't really take you seriously after a few months of you really loving me. When I say I can't really take you seriously, meaning I'm not about to sit out here and discuss having a baby with you after a few months of fucking. Like I know dick be good, but it ain't that motherfucking good to where you like, oh, I want to have your baby. Like I, I I've said that trust me but i've said that to my husband we already had kids okay so i just wanted another one and i got another one out of it you know what i'm saying but when you and we've been together 20 years so it's like okay it's different but when you with somebody after a few months why you know supposed to be discussing having children with each other like that's not something that we do nowadays with the times how times are today niggas be having families and kids and 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 other niggas on the side yeah i said niggers be having families and kids and other niggas on the side meaning they on a dl and they got a family you don't know these niggas do they Okay, they could tell you I love you, you cute, and all of that shit real quick in a heartbeat. And then you turn around and pop a pregnant bitch, they don't fucking know you no more. They be like, who? Tish who? Tish what? Tish? You, tish Tush? Who? I, I don't know who the fuck you talking about. That ain't my baby. That's the first thing that they say that come out of their mouth. That's not my baby. When you pop up pregnant after a few months of fucking with somebody. That's what they said, bitch. So it's like, first of all, let me, let me address that to you. 
you've only been with that nigga for a few months and y'all discussing having a baby because he's mad that you can't have kids and you want to have IVF. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but if you was the best thing on this earth and I just started fucking with you, I'm not talking about having babies with you. We, we're not talking about that. We're not discussing it. I don't care if I know your family. I've been to your weddings. I've been to funerals. I've been to birthday parties and invitations to holiday events. If we've been together for a few months, we're not discussing a baby. That's That should not be a topic at hand. Especially if you got a husband on the other side of town who you, who you are still married to, okay? We don't do that as human beings and women. And you're asking me, Tish, should you take time for yourself? Bitch, yes, you should take time for your motherfucking self. You left a marriage and then hopped in with somebody after four months. Okay, that's fine. That's your business. But then you and this dude is talking about kids. Now you're moving a little bit too fast. Skirt! Pump those motherfucking brakes, bitch. And if you need new ones, make sure you take your ass and get some new brakes before the motherfucking rotors and calibers fuck up. Okay, bitch. Let's just talk about some real shit. Should you take time for yourself? This is what I be talking about. When a female get out of one relationship and then just jump into another one, and then y'all get mad because the nigga treats you like shit. Um, he's shitting on you. He's cheating on you. He don't give two fucks about you. Bitch, you just left a man like a month ago, and now you went into another relationship, and you done moved the nigga in. Why the fuck would he care about you? You too loose, honey. You too loose. Let's tighten that shit the fuck up and think about let's let's just think about shit yeah you should take time for yourself i'm not saying that you wrong for giving your husband a second chance because that is your husband okay and some people out there be like oh, i don't care if that nigga cheated on me it's funny how it always be the ones that always got so much advice sometimes that ain't been married or aren't married or don't have a man okay or do have a man but they've been fucking with him for a month listen when you get married to somebody, you marry them for better or for worse. And sometimes the worst can get too motherfucking bad and bitch, you got to you got to bounce like she did. And like I did. She just said that his drinking was a little bit too much for her. I can totally relate to that, sweetheart. Sweetheart girl, I can totally relate to that. That's why this bitch is on the West Coast, okay? And my husband is on the East, but he won't be for too long, okay? Mm. The 26th of March, bitch will be home with her husband. But... You know, I did leave him and I did divorce him and he did change his ways. Thank you, Jesus. But it's not wrong of you to give your husband a second chance. But sweetheart, first thing, you have to think about yourself before you give anybody a second chance. Give yourself a second chance. Give yourself a chance to breathe. Give yourself a chance to love yourself. Give yourself a chance to get to know who you are, who Tish is inside, not who Tish is as a wife or a mother or a girlfriend or a friend, but get to know Tish, Tish, who you are. When you get to know yourself and you get to heal and you get to learn who you are and you get to learn how to love yourself, then the person that you could bring into your life will value you more because you will not tolerate bullshit. Okay. And that's what I had to do. Like, it was so hard for me to leave my husband and to be here without him. It was like hard. And I've never really exp um, experienced that without him because we've been together for so long, but it was hard and it does get lonely. Trust and believe me, I have gotten lonely without him. And you know, it's like the relationships that I did have, like, you know, I might've dated someone. It was hard for me. Like, you know, because I looked at everybody and was like, you're not him. You're not him. I don't fuck with you. And that's the mentality that I had. And, and that that's how it was because I still held him close to my heart, but I was able to learn who I was and I was able to love myself and I was able to grow as a person because I was mature too. I was immature too. And I did some immature things in the relationship too. So, you know, it wasn't just one sided. It was both sides. You know what I'm saying? He did his shit and I did my own shit. Not like no sneaky shit, but my attitude sucked. And I mean, you know, it is attitude from drinking and him drinking and you know what I'm saying? But I could have been a little bit mature, more mature about some of the things that I did. Okay. And I get that. And as a grown up. And as a mature woman, I realize that now. So I don't think anything is wrong with you, Tish, giving your husband a second chance because that is your husband. And I'm pretty sure that your heart aches for him. And it's definitely not being desperate, okay? 
It's who you know. This is who you planned on building a future with. This is who you plan on being with for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not faulting you for that, and I'm not knocking you. You need to do what's best for you. But the first thing that you need to do, sweetheart, is get rid of that old baggage. Get rid of that old animosity that you have towards your husband. Get rid of that old baggage and animosity towards the ex that you had that, you know, you couldn't have kids with. You know, shit happens for a reason, honey. You don't need to repro... Um, reproduce with anybody else okay or even take the steps of trying to take iv to reproduce with somebody else like come on man you just left one relationship and then you went again to another one and have kids with somebody that you barely even know okay and like you don't really know this nigga could have kids all around the world you know what i'm saying he could get around you don't know this. You only going off of what he's telling you. And like I tell y'all all the time, this motherfucker has a representative. Everybody got a rep, a rep that they show off when they first meet someone. Y'all know what I say about the representatives. Those are the representatives that come out and be real nice. And those are the representatives who pull you in and make you want to be with that person. And then once you've been with them long enough, the real of them come out. You know what I'm saying? That's just like I tell y'all. If I was a bitch, nobody wouldn't want to fuck with me. I'm not a bitch in general, but you know what I'm saying? I can be. My representative be coming out when I meet people. Not well. I'm myself when I meet people. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if I have to go handle, like, some business, then I'm Sarah. Not April, but Sarah. You know, I'm just like, hey, how are you? It's nice to see you today. Thank you for having me. Like, for real, I'm Sarah. Like, dead ass serious. I'll be, like, on some, some fucking Sarah shit, okay? I'll be on some Sarah shit. I'll be like, oh, it's... Nice to meet you, hun. Thank you. And in my mind, I'm like, this bitch needs to shut the fuck up and hurry up so I can get the fuck up out of here. This is me, but I'm going to put on that Sarah mentality just so I can get what the fuck I need to get and get the fuck away from you. Do what I can to do and get the fuck away from you. This is my representative. And when I leave, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm jump in my truck and blast my motherfucking music. Uh, juvenile, back that thing up. You know what I'm saying? Then they, look, if they came out in the parking lot, they'd be like, um, that wasn't the same young lady that came in there. What is that she's listening to? Wasn't her name Sarah? Hmm. Look more like Shatika now. That'd be my representative, bitch. Okay? So, for somebody that just met somebody, why would you want to have a baby with him? Like, that shit happens for a reason. And trust and believe, you think that that relationship that you had, he was great and he was a good guy. Yeah, bitch, that's his rep. Hello? They all nice in the beginning. Please, look, bitch, I was real nice in the beginning. I mean, I'm saying... You know what I'm saying? This 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 is this is how it starts off. And to and to want to have a baby with somebody, whether it's four years down the line, there's no need for you to discuss that shit right now, Tish. Like seriously. That was a desperate move right there. If you want to talk about being desperate, bitch, that was motherfucking desperate to be having a conversation with a dude that you just got with about babies, like and having a baby and doing this for him. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. If a man can't accept you for who the fuck you are, especially after you just first met him, then he needs to go ahead somewhere. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, Fernando. Okay, shit. Because he can't be a Felicia, so bye, Fernando. Shit happens for a reason, and thank God that, you know what I'm saying, I'm not wishing you bad, but that relationship is one that you really didn't need. You didn't really even give yourself time to heal. If you, like, you're married to somebody and then you move out, four months is not a long time to heal, especially from a marriage. But then, again, we all are different, so I'm not going to judge you on that. I'm not. But what I'm telling you for is for your own good is this. You need time for you. You need time to get to know yourself. Because if you get to know yourself, sweetheart, I guarantee you, you won't be picking up scallywags and men that are, are not worth it or even having conversations with men that you just started fucking with about having children. OK, that's not what you will do. Once you get to learn to love yourself, you'll see people for who they are. You'll realize who your husband is really. And then that'll make you determine whether you want to go back to him or not. That's nice that he said, I'll do anything to get you back. Well, who don't fucking say that if they really want to get you back? Yeah. So if he really is willing to do whatever it takes to get you back, then his first thing would be to learn to wait for you and to learn to love you from a distance and to learn to love himself enough to stop drinking and to not cheat on you. 
You know what I'm saying? That's what the fuck he will do. If he's willing to do anything for you, Tish, then he's willing to wait for you to heal inside. And he's willing to love you from a distance and to build on your relationship. Let's start it off now as a friendship, dude, because we ain't fucked with each other in almost a year. So we're going to build on this. And since you're so willing to do whatever, let that nigga court you. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know what that means. Some of y'all young motherfuckers probably don't know what courting means. Like, what you know what I'm saying? He going to woo you. He going to take you out. You're not about to give him the cootie cat. Even though he already had the cootie cat from you, sweetheart. Because we do know he did. Because that's your husband. But now it's time to... Shh, nigga, you going to have to work for this pussy. Okay? You going to have to work for this pussy. And I'm... That's great. We still married and all. But you going to have to improve yourself and prove yourself. Improve yourself and prove yourself, nigga. All right? That's how we going to do it. Improve and prove yourself. The same thing with you, Tish. You got to improve yourself and prove yourself too. You ain't got to prove yourself to your husband, but you need to prove yourself to your own motherfucking self. And you need to improve yourself for your own self. When I say improve yourself, bitch, meaning stop worrying about having a relationship with anybody and start worrying about having a relationship with yourself and God, okay? Seriously. If you're not that religious... Have a relationship with somebody that's higher than thou, okay? I don't care if you sit there and meditate and, and, and meditate to the freaking, you know what I'm saying, Buddhist gods. Because I, I sit there and meditate to the Buddhists, okay? I do. Y'all know, I tell y'all all the time, I am not a really religious person. Like, I have faith and I do have belief. What y'all see and what y'all believe in, I don't really believe all of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know that there is something, someone or something out there that is... More powerful than us. It might not be who y'all think it is, God and Jesus in that form, but I feel like there is something that is more powerful than all of us, okay? So I'm not going to get into religion with you guys because that's not what I'm here for, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I do believe in God. I believe that there is a God, but what y'all may feel there is a God, I might not feel the same way, and I, and I don't. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I talk to God every night, but my God may not be yours. You know what I'm saying? And I have conversations. Okay. That's what I do. I don't go to church. Okay. I haven't been to church in so long. So if somebody wants to freaking crucify me right now, please, please, bitch, don't crucify me in the comments because I, I guarantee you, you don't want to because I come for your throat. Trust me. You don't ever want to fuck with me. Okay. Cause I, listen. I will come for your throat and I will make you pay like you owe me a motherfucking bill. All right? Straight up like that. Don't come for me in the comments section talking about why you should go to church and all of this. Because what you should do is mind your motherfucking business. All right? That's what the fuck you should do. And I'm not saying nothing is wrong with going to church. But this is how I feel about it. Okay? And I know we off topic, but this is how I feel about it. I've been to church all my life as a young kid and as a teenager. And the one thing that really started irritating me as I got older is why is there freaking four collection plates going around and then you got to get up and put your tides in. So y'all done collected money five times. And where is this money all going to? All right. That's the one thing that pisses me off. But the thing that really deterred me and like pushed me away from church is the fact that the whole the Holy Ghost people like I've seen too many documentaries on how that starts out. Okay, I don't even believe in that. Y'all sit there and be jumping around. Why is it the same women always having this whole? When I used to go to Ebenezer Baptist Church in Flushing Queens, okay, all of these women, the same women, would all be having the freaking Holy Ghost at the same time, falling on the floor. Like you about to bust your hip, lady. You old. You break. You gonna break a hip. Bitch, sit your fucking ass down this hard-ass wooden pupil and just a uh, pupil, whatever the freak it's called, and just sit there and be quiet, all right? With that big ass, they would be jumping around with these big ass Easter bonnet hats on. And it wasn't even Easter. This is what they were wearing. And this is the thing. That's another thing that pissed me off. Why do people have to get so dressed up for church like they go into a fashion show? And then these same so holier than thou women go there and they sit there and they look and judge everybody what the fuck they came in with. This is not a fashion show. It's church. What does it even matter what you got on? You go as you come. So as I'm... You know, as I'm getting older and I'm noticing these same women that always come in with their little feather freaking chicken hats and all dressed up, 
you know, there was this one particular person that would come every Sunday and the church was divided. So on this side would be the left and the right. And in the middle was this big wide walkway with red carpeting. And this homeless man, the same black man, he would come and he was home every Sunday just for prayer and just to listen. Do you know that these chicken headed bitches, and I'm saying chicken headed because it's the feathers, but they probably chickens too, would sit there and be like, mm, did you see him? How dare he? How dare you? How dare you? And so they would talk about him. Hypocrites. 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 And it seemed like everyone that I knew that was so holier than thou were nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. My uncle's wife, she was so holier than thou, and she was a hypocrite. She tried to get me and my mama kicked out of the projects because she wanted the apartment. She told them so many lies about how my mother fed me macaroni and cheese and hot dogs every day for dinner. All kind of shit she would made up just so we can get thrown out of the projects department because she wanted to move from Brooklyn to Queens. Okay? And, like, who gives a fuck if we ate McDonald's, um, if we ate macaroni and cheese and hot dogs every night? Which we didn't. My mom never even made freaking hot dogs. Or my mom never even made box macaroni and cheese at all. I don't even think my mother knows how to make box macaroni and cheese, but she know how to make some homemade box macaroni and cheese. And she wasn't making that every day. But who cares if she made that for us every day? We ate. Fuck. It don't say nowhere in the good book or in child children's book that you kids cannot eat hot dogs and macaroni and cheese every day. It says that you need to take care of them and make sure that they eat. Okay. But it seems like everybody that's so holier than thou and goes around preaching the word, it be those same ones that are just like hypocrites, pot calling the kettle black, always talking shit about somebody. You know what I'm saying? Always judging somebody. And then on a Sunday, go up in church and be acting like they so better than everybody else. That's the shit that be pissing me off. So I'm not a big holier than thou person and I don't go to church. So if you don't like me because of those reasons, then deuces. Peace. Bye, Felicia. Okay. So... Like I said, Tish, the first thing you need to do is love yourself. Improve, improve yourself. You know, if you are a religious person, then, you know what I'm saying? The first thing you need to do is put God first. Because if you do that, then, you know what I'm saying, your life and your feeling about yourself would be better. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the God that everybody else prays to, but whatever you believe in. But have faith in yourself first. Have some faith in yourself first. That's the first important thing. Love yourself, girl, and have faith in you, okay? And then you can work on your marriage with your husband. Let him court you, and you can be friends and build this relationship together. But don't just take the nigga back just like that because you want some dick or whatever. Are you lonely? Because loneliness will also get you messiness. Bitch, trust me. Be lonely, and your shit will get real messy. So, you guys, I got to go. I got to walk my dog. It's now 938. I got to walk her. She will pee on my carpets if I don't. So, I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. I also got to go make sure my son is all right. You know what I'm saying? Because he did have a seizure. So, I do have to make sure that my baby is okay. And I got to take this wig off, too. Because I, why do I feel like my motherfucking edges is not edges, but I just feel like, oh, also, Hold up. First of all, I got to send a special shout out to my girl, Nadira. You know, I know you watch it, bitch. I know you watch it. So I posted something on Instagram last week. I can't remember what it was, but she had responded. Oh, it was a picture of me with no makeup on. And she wrote, you still look the same, like from 258. I'm like, what is 258? What the fuck is this bitch talking about? This is what I'm saying. Because I didn't even know it was her. And then I looked at the picture and I was like, okay. She looks familiar. She looks like someone I know, but maybe not. That's her. So I clicked on the picture and I went on her page and then I seen the real name and I was floored. I was so freaking happy because I know you guys, I mentioned her in comments on, on my real talk before. Um, she is my friend from junior high school in Nadira. Okay. When I was in junior high school in Brooklyn and she was so, uh, she was just such a good friend to me. You know what I'm saying? Because People tease me, as I told you guys, freckle face, all kind of shit. Um, all kind of shit. She was my friend, you know what I'm saying? She's She was my friend. She was always my friend. She was, okay, so I've talked about her plenty of times in the video. I, I said that about her that, you know, she could sing. She could sing her ass off, okay? And a lot of times she would be sick because she had diabetes. And not everybody knew, but I knew. But the one time, okay, so... 
I never forget this, and I'm gonna share this with you guys, and don't tell no fucking body. So one time when we was in junior high school, you know, everybody was developing the girls. They was getting boobs and stuff like that, you know. And I didn't have none. But I wanted some like everybody else. I wanted some titties, but I didn't have none. But Dara had boobs. I didn't get none. Everybody had boobs, you know. And so one day I came to to junior high school, and I had took the shoulder pads out of my mom's jacket. And I had shoved them in my shirt. Okay. And the Adira caught me in the hallway. She was like, April, something's not right. Why does your boobs look like that? And how did you get boobs overnight? And the bitch didn't make them small. I made them a little, for, for, for boobs to grow overnight, I made them like a little bit too big. She said, they're a little lopsided. Come here. So she took me in the bathroom and, you know, she asked me what was going on. And then I said, I just want boobs like, you know, titties like everybody else. And I showed her the shoulder pads and she convinced me to take them out of my shirt and I never wore them again. But she was the only person that noticed that and saw that and took me in the bathroom and was talking because she was my friend. And so when I seen it was her girl, we was on the phone for four hours the next day. Okay. I'm so happy to reconnect with her. She was like my, like my only friend. Like I had one more friend, but you know what I'm saying? Like. It's funny when you think about someone so much, like I think about her all the time and I think about my friend L'Oreal all the time. You know, it was just them two. And I just, I'm just so happy to have been able to reconnect with her, you know what I'm saying? And it's just amazing. Like I'm, that's what I'm happy about for social media, like that I can be able to reach out to people that are my friends from the past that really like touch me. Like if I don't remember you, this sweetheart, you know, like my friend Adira says, you ain't put no impact on my life. And there are some people that do reach out to me. Hey, you remember me? No, bitch, I don't. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know you. No, you probably was that bitch that was calling me freckle face and shit, Medusa. So you guys, I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to my girl Nadira. I love you, boo. You know what I'm saying? You better make sure to come up here in Arizona. She said you can come to Arizona because her son lives in Vegas, but yeah. We're going to hang out. But I love you guys. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Thumbs this video up. Share it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, I'll see you soon.